there is something exciting happening in the Catholic Church, a renewed vision and commitment to taking Christ's love out to those who need it most. Bishop Barry Nestout, leader of the Diocese of Richmond, Virginia, wants to do his part in fulfilling this mission. So that the good news is proclaimed effectively. The faith is taught, it's done taught well, so it's internalized and accepted in people's hearts, that people are led to holiness uh, through the sacramental life of the church, and that charity is effectively expressed and carried out the primary work of the church to make sure that we're reaching out in charity to all those in need at every circumstance. Well, His Excellency Bishop Barry Nestout is here with us now, and it's an honor to have you. It's a real pleasure to well, have you with us. Great to be with you. Thanks for the invitation. I'm honored to be here as well. Thank you. You grew up in a family that uh, was part of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Um, what, what was that like for you? Uh, you know, as a, a boy, uh, my dad had uh, been impacted and transformed by his encounter with the Charismatic Renewal. He had uh, encountered a prayer group in his or where he worked at the National Security Agency. Mm. Uh, at a time, I think he was you know, struggling with all the res family responsibilities, all the burdens of, of That's a caring pretty for unlikely a family, place. So. Yeah, but this was a group of men who gathered There's together. There's a prayer group at the NSA. Yeah, they, they gathered at lunchtime and they prayed together, supported one another. Uh, a, I think it's just a great uh, support in their work, but also in faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, he encountered that at that location and, and then was uh, then much more immersed in his life. He was on a national service committee for the Charismatic Renewal for the Catholic Church in the United States, uh, uh, led a prayer group in my home parish, uh, had uh, very much uh, changed his life and brought into our family uh, the, a, a, an energy in terms of the faith. Yeah, not just kind of a, a rote mm -hmm. uh, living the faith, which we did and certainly practiced uh, in terms of Sunday Mass and, and uh, regular participation in the sacraments. But this transformed him in the sense that he was now um, uh, expressing it with energy, zeal, and um, and beauty, and it just it was really something that impacted the whole family, impacted me and my vocation. Yeah, I was, well, what, what led you to become a priest? Well, it was a, a long process of discernment, a reflection. I had uh, studied architecture. I saw where my own kind of gifts or um, talents seemed to be in that realm, an interest there. Uh, and yet there was always this sense of a, a call to a deeper service of the church and, and a more active participation in the life of the church a proclamation of teaching and expressing that. Was there a struggle? So, uh, I'd say that internally there was a little bit back and forth that, uh, through my college years is when I was really reflecting on that and discerning it. Uh, I, I had uh, wonderful experiences on a few young adult and youth retreats that uh, helped me to reflect a bit more seriously about the faith, uh, reflecting on the Paschal mystery and how that Paschal mystery uh, was transformative in many people's lives and then could be in mine as well, and that uh, we were all called as Christians to be immersed in that mystery, which is a share in the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord. And that came to us in many different ways, or comes to us in many different ways, uh, in terms of the sacrifices uh, and the challenges that, that we face. Um, and in our response to that, if we are engaging those events, uh, maybe those losses or challenges, with the sense of the faith, we can be sure the Lord's gonna guide us into a, a, a resurrected experience, a, a transformative experience through that challenge or struggle, whatever it might be. And that is the Paschal mystery kind of active and operative in our own lives. Again, if we're approaching that, uh, our own faith life in the context of Christ's own uh, gift to us. Well, I, I, Paul said he was a master builder, so I guess studying architecture. <laughs> sure. are, 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 what do you see as the challenge for the church today particularly in American culture, sure. how do we build the church? Because it seems to be the church is eroding away. How, how do we build? Well, there's a way almost uh, a kind of um, a forgetting or a drifting away from the faith that, uh, that has occurred with many in terms of our generation and, and younger as well. Uh, so they're not as uh, engaged and it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. We have the, the huge infl influence of the culture around us, a very secularized, very materialistic culture that we see, and it kind of a, it affects everything. And, uh, and it's very seductive, and it draws people away slowly, but carefully, uh, from uh, a, a, a spiritual perspective, a life of faith. Uh, so I think um, certainly what's uh, happening here, CBN, as well as other efforts at engaging and expressing the faith through uh, new media, social media, um, 
you know, the same message, evangelization, the same Paschal mystery, but uh, expressed with uh, new means, new ardor, new uh, expressions and, and efforts in manner. Uh, this is what uh, uh, several popes, going back to Paul VI, right after the Second Vatican Council, have been speaking to the church about, and uh, certainly more clearly in more recent years with Pope St. John Paul II and Pope Benedict, as well as with Pope Francis. The, uh, the, um, the call for each one of us to articulate, uh, express our own encounter with the Lord. Uh, and in that encounter, that knowledge of that, which, where we've been transformed, then go enter into the, the world around us to accompany those who are experiencing struggles or difficulties or trials and don't have any way of putting that into perspective, any way of being able to put it in context and see that there's maybe a greater purpose in their life, a greater call from God, and to be able to help them by expressing our own encounter with the Lord in that accompaniment. And this is what Pope Francis is speaking about. And that then leads to uh, a transformation. Here, here at CBN, I'm finding uh, internationally, it's easier to preach a gospel of self-sacrifice, to say, deny yourself, take up the cross and follow him. Um, in Latin America, in Asia, um, in Africa, the, those are messages that actually resonate and people are literally turning from other religions, they're, they're leaving their life in order to have a new life in Christ. Here in America, it seems the culture is all about happiness um, and personal fulfillment in, in that message of sacrifice uh, just seems to bounce right off. Uh, are you finding that? I'd say, that you, again, that's uh, that secularized and materialistic culture where, and what's highlighted is happiness as though that's the goal of life. And yet there's something much deeper, much profound that we're called to. We, the dignity of the human person is meant for so much more, yeah. each one of us. Uh, and our Lord gives us the template. He gives us the the, the, the passage, example. The right. example. Uh, and we're to share in that example. You bet, in each day. And do it in small ways and in large. Uh, Pope Francis just most recently in his apostolic exhortation on holiness, which he's uh, just a few weeks ago, in other words, that was uh, promulgated. And uh, he's really speaking about how each one of us is called to that life of witness and of holiness, uh, cooperation with the Spirit, uh, and being able to manifest all those fruits of the Spirit, drawing upon the gifts that we've received, uh, and uh, that each person, from the least to the greatest, uh, in terms of circumstances of life, has the possibility of leading a life of holiness and having an impact in terms of evangelization and witness to those around them. Their small circle, starting with friends, family, those they encounter day to day in work, and then widening from that, uh, and in this kind of work too, which reaches not only nationally, but internationally, to, to be able to try to bring that message in a more effective way, so that people can not only hear it, but that it's internalized. It's something that is transform transformative within, and then it can impact the whole world, and we can see uh, uh, a transformation of the culture. Yeah, I think the, the Catholic Church is really underlying, and not just Pope Francis, but it seems going back three popes, there's been a real emphasis on evangelization, the, the missionary role of the church in culture today. I agree, and uh, it's been a consistent uh, message uh, through those years and through those pontificates, uh, just the realization that you know, the church exists to evangelize. It's our, our purpose, and there's all the other aspects of the mission, which is to teach and to call people to holiness and to reach out on charity. They're all integral to it, but that lens through which we see everything is, how is all this work really bringing Christ? And that message, it was um, the first disciples. We've seen the Lord. We have seen him mm -hmm. resurrected. And the energy, the, the, the just uh, overwhelming kind of transformation that occurred with them, that they saw him dead, they saw him die on the cross. Uh, they knew that he was dead. The Romans were very effective in being able to carry out their crucifixion. And, um, and yet he, there he was standing before them, risen from the dead. And that was so amazing, so transformative for them that they could not keep that in. They had to go out and speak about that. You and have it to share it. Change the world. Once you see him, it'll, it changes your life. Well, we can talk for a long time, but they're wrapping me. Uh, thanks for being with us. God bless you. Yeah, thanks for a real honor to have you. It's a pleasure to be with you.